Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and this is the Not So Serious Keto video podcast. Now, if you hear some background noises, especially like a humming sort of a sound during the course of this podcast, that is the dehumidifier that I had to set up because we had a little pipe break that happened beneath our master bathroom shower. And uh, yeah, that's what I spent most of yesterday cleaning up and fixing. Fortunately, it was above this storage area that we have back kind of around the corner from the man cave here. And we had this big bucket, the sort that you put beverages in or a keg of beer in. There's a big bucket in that little storage area where we had a bunch of posters, a lot of movie posters, like actual vintage movie posters. Well, maybe vintage is the wrong word, but authentic movie posters. And, uh, that got all flooded out. So I today is going to be the day where we pull out all the posters, take them out of their tubes. I think some of them were wrapped in plastic, but I think I'm probably going to be a pretty sad panda. There's going to be a, a lot of Star Wars posters that uh, probably get thrown away. On the bright side, though, the fact that the water went into this bucket, most of it did anyway, protected a significant portion of the man cave proper and didn't, you know, no water got onto any carpet or into the drywall or anything like that. But basically, if you hear hum, that's what's going on. Another quick thing on the audio and video quality, I had a viewer from my last podcast comment, you're obviously drinking again. Your skin looks horrible and puffy. And, well, first off, I'm not. I'm, you know, still sober, sober since January 1. But... I've been trying to dial in some of my lighting settings and creating a cheat sheet so that I know, depending on where, what room I've got the camera set up in, what I'm filming, what I need to do to set the aperture value, white balance, um, neutral density filter, etc. And I have found that for the podcast here, there is I, I haven't dialed in a good setting yet. Lighting wise, if, if I choose the, or I'm sorry, white balance, if I choose tungsten, that looks a, a little bit too cool. If I choose fluorescent, it looks a little bit too warm. And, you know, I'll, I'll have a setting. You know, I'm kind of looking off at my little viewfinder right here. I've got this set, what I thought was perfect at one point, and now I feel like it's maybe a little bit too bright. So what I need to do, and I plan to do, I've got one of these white, um, I don't know what, what you call them. It's, it's, a, it's for a white balance. It's a white balance screen. You hold up, you take a picture of it, and then the camera is supposed to calculate the accurate white balance. And I need to start doing that. Well, first I need to figure out how to do it. Then I need to start doing that, I think, before each video that I do, just to try and make sure that I, I've got the lighting correct. But it's one more step in a series of steps that I already feel I don't have enough time for. And I'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. But um, yeah, I wasn't so much bothered by the fact that someone accused me of drinking again, because I'm not and I don't care. Um, and I know that you know, my skin looked a little bit different just for, you know, from the lighting, but puffy? Oh, come on, that's just hurtful. So now I've got a handful of channel-related announcements that uh, will be met, I, I suppose, with varying degrees of excitement or lack thereof by all of you. The first of which is I agreed to do my first commercial. I've been kind of talking about this and teasing this a little bit the last few podcasts that I felt like I was getting close. And I finally did. I recorded a commercial or I recorded some raw material for a commercial that then Perfect Keto is going to use. And in fact, they're going to start releasing it today. And doubly, in fact, uh, at probably 9 a.m. Central Time this morning, I'm going to release a video of me filming the commercial. So it's sort of a behind the scenes sort of deal where you get to see me <laughs> just doing what I do. I, you, you see how sort of lacking in, well, I don't know if I want to say lacking in professionalism. I don't have a, a tremendous amount of skill set, I think, uh, in terms of marketing and, and, and filming a commercial. So I decided instead what I would do is just film myself filming the commercial and then I would give that to Perfect Keto and let them carve that up and, and do whatever they want to do. But as part of that, at 9 a.m., you'll get to see that. And I'm also going to do um, 
a discount, uh, a coupon code with them for all of their collagen powders because it's for the Sleep Plus Beauty Collagen. I'll be doing uh, a 30% off. All It's exclusive to Serious Keto, but all of the, the product, all of the collagen products from Perfect Keto. So anyhow, that's coming at 9 a.m. Uh, that is not, it's not a promo. It's not something I'm going to be inserting in any of my videos, but you may see it on other you know, social media, whether that's Instagram or Facebook, or maybe even in front of some other YouTube videos. Sort of along those lines, Amazon reached out to me and asked if I wanted to start doing Amazon Live. And I've only watched like a few seconds of Amazon Live. It basically, it seems like it's content creators who or influencers doing kind of like home shopping network or QVC or whatever. Basically just showing products, using products, I guess. I don't know. I don't fully know what it is. I think the only keto YouTuber that I've seen, that this isn't to say that it's the only one that does it, but the only one that I've seen do it is Christy Davis. And I'm not even sure if she was doing keto products, but I just, I recognized her as I was scrolling through Amazon and she was on Amazon Live. So I don't know what all of this is about, how much time it would take. I, I Basically, I know almost none of the details aside from the fact that Amazon asked if I'd like to do it. And I said, uh, let's have a phone call. So could be in the future that, you know, from time to time, I spend a little bit, a little bit of time on Amazon Live but it will not affect any of my content here on YouTube. That's a promise. All that is gonna stay exactly the same. If not, get better, which I will talk about in just a moment. I've heard it said that the two best days in a man's life are the day he buys a boat and the day he sells it. Well, I don't plan on ever having a boat. I would say that the best days of my life, my life, the best days of my life were the birth of my children. I think the next best day of my life is going to be the day that Terry and I are empty nesters. And that day is coming really soon, perhaps within the next week. So Connor and Jaden bought a house about 20 minutes or so away from here, and they've been gradually getting moved in. Not quite at the speed I would have liked to have seen, but this weekend, they plan on staying there for the first time. And, and hopefully then that becomes a continuation. Not that I don't love them and not that I don't enjoy having them around, but it's, it's made life difficult in a, lot of, in a lot of ways, having them here. Um, you know, it's sort of like if you had a college roommate that showed up and said, hey, can I crash at your place for a couple of days? And then they're still there two and a half years later, eating your food, not paying rent, driving up your utility bill, not really doing a whole lot of help around the house and uh, making lots of messes. Now, if any of you are considering giving me parenting advice right now, I'm gonna tell you to pump the brakes because that's probably not a button you wanna push with me. Anyhow, um, having them out is going to be such a profound change in in life for me. I think it's going to be a huge opportunity for Terry and I to get back to being husband and wife. We spent uh, many, many years, I think, just being parenting partners and now grandparenting partners. And we, we just have not, we've had precious little time for one another. So I'm really looking forward to that. I hope she is too. Then also, just we need to go room by room through this house and clean and sort and declutter and simplify. I'm looking forward to that. In terms of just grocery bills and utility bills to go from a four adult and one child household to just a two adult household, that is going to be a very, very big deal for me financially. The ability for me to, at any time that I want to film, is going to be huge. I think you are going to see a, a, an increase definitely in terms of recipe videos. That's something I really want to do to get on, you know, probably a two recipe video per week cadence, but to have the opportunity to have unfettered access to my kitchen when there's not other people wanting to 
cook or eat or make messes, that's going to be big. And I think also I'm going to have more time. You know, I talked about lack of time to even get my white balance set up. I've got such a narrow window to shoot video very often, like to shoot this podcast on Saturday morning. I kind of got to get this done while Colton is eating breakfast before he comes down into my man cave and basically takes it over. I mean, the amount of toys I had to move to set up my camera and lights, that was about a 15 minute process right there. So this is time that I will be able to put into improving the quality of my photography, uh, you know, maybe start doing some, you know, better, better shots, some, you know, panning stuff, you know, like a gimbal shot around the food, you know, just, just some things that make it look a little bit classier, not so much like just one guy in a camera, which is what it is. I also think with this extra time, I'm going to be able to start putting time back into my other channel, Lean Body Mind. I was I was foolish and naive to think that I could pull off two YouTube channels, at least at least with all of my other life events going on. And I would like to be able to at least get to a point where I can release one video per week on Lean Body Mind. And I think that I'm going to have the time available to work on that as well. So all of those things, very exciting. Um, I think also as a dad, thermostat access and control is a big thing. I find about three times a day I'm readjusting the thermostat because one of the other three people in this house are changing the temperature. I don't know what it is with these people, but they've got like a about a one to two degree like happiness point. Like 72 to 73 degrees seems like the, the, the place where they're happy. And uh, I think... I think we can handle colder in the winter and warmer in the summer on the thermostat. You know, saying this as the guy who pays the bills. Oh, and another thing that just occurred to me once we get to it just being Terry and me is I think I'll be able to start working her lower carb. I don't think I'll ever get her fully keto, but I, I could definitely see working her lower carb, which I think would be a good thing. I mean, just I think low carb in general is a good thing for everybody. I'm not saying, you know, specifically for her, but... Um, that'll be helpful. It'll be helpful in terms of the food items that we buy as well. So right now it's kind of like I get 20% of the fridge or pantry for keto and then there's all the non-keto stuff. I also think that if I'm not the one always preparing food, which seems to be the case more often than not, it's going to make it a lot easier for me to go back and start doing a few extended fasts from time to time. It's been probably a year or more since I've done an extended fast. And I really, I really enjoy those. Just the way that you feel, it's pretty incredible. And I'm looking forward to doing one of those again. So big changes coming up in the upcoming weeks. In terms of other things coming up on the channel, next week, I hope, will be another episode of Pragmatic Keto. And this is going to be one where I talk about keto branded or labeled products. Ingredients, prices, things like that, my take on it. Then we'll be back to another regular podcast. And then the next interview that I'm going to do will be with Alicia from Keto Upgrade. A number of you have requested her as a person that I'd interview. And like Indigo Neely, she also does a lot of baking especially dessert type items, which is really, really outside of my wheelhouse. I think it'll be really interesting to talk to her as someone who is a professional pastry chef who then went keto. You know, keto baking to me is just, it is such a challenge. So I'm very excited about that interview. I hope you are too. Now I mentioned that the next episode of Pragmatic Keto is going to be about keto products, but I need to share a specific story with you. And this is sort of, this is one I'm a, a little bit conflicted about on, on a couple of different levels. One of my viewers, Linda, thank you, Linda, sent me a big, big box of keto baked goods from a keto bakery in the Houston area. It, it was overwhelming, just the amount of stuff that was in there. There were pretzels and bagels and bread and croissants and muffins. There might have been some other stuff. There was a lot of stuff. And I, the first thing I had was the a croissant. And it was amazing. I, I was not certain that it was keto. 
I mean, it was, it was too good. It was too good to be keto. The thing is, I didn't have a glucose monitor on at the time. I've been having some issues with the Abbott Freestyle Libre glucose monitors, and uh, I, was on, I was on a bad one. So I had, I'd removed it, and I didn't take any sort of a blood glucose measurement, but I was suspicious. Just, it was too much like a real croissant. And even with my limited baking experience, keto baking experience, it just, it didn't seem right to me. So then I tried, I think it was the blueberry muffin, and it was amazing. It was as good as any muffin I have ever had in my life. This time, though, I did a blood glucose test. I'm not sure if I took a picture of it. Um, I'll check my camera, and if I did, I'll pop it up on screen. If I didn't take a picture of it, well, it was terrifying. I had a blood glucose reading of 183. And normally, I'm hanging out in the 90s. So probably a 90-point blood glucose spike from this thing. And you know, I immediately contacted Linda, and I said, Linda, I, I, I'm concerned that maybe, maybe they accidentally sent me some stuff that wasn't keto. Do they also do non-keto? And you know, have you have you checked yourself after trying any of these products? So I had a chicken patty. This is an unbreaded. I just had made chicken patties with ground chicken, and I put a chicken patty and some mayonnaise between two slices of this keto wheat bread. And this was the result. Whoop, I'll move over a bit. This was the result right here. Big spike. A two. Two on a 10 scale. That's low. That's about as low as anything I've recorded using the level software. 51 points my glucose went up and stayed elevated above that 110 point threshold for 75 minutes. So first, I kind of felt horrible just telling Linda about this because she, you know, she sent me this gift and it was not it was not cheap as you can probably imagine. And I didn't want to hurt her feelings, but at the same time, if if there's a problem with this bakery's products, I wanted her to know about it and wanted her to be able to, you know, maybe test her own glucose and see if she saw a reaction. But this is a tough call. Um, it's not really my place to go and, and contact this bakery or to out them, but I think Linda now probably has to wrestle with that a little bit as well. Does she go back and ask to talk to a manager? Does she go and show her blood glucose results to them? Um, I don't know. I don't know if this was an accident or if there's something maybe a little shady going on and these aren't, in fact, truly keto products. And this is one of the reasons why, you know, I always get back to the whole, you need to own your own measurements. You need to be your own ingredient police as well. So when you're buying product, you can't just blindly accept the fact that it's keto if there's a keto label on it. I think I've shown that a number of times in my product reviews. Read the ingredients, step one. Step two don't invest heavily in any product until you've done a glucose test, whether that's with blood glucose or a continuous glucose monitor. And I did a video uh, that I'll link to in the end card on this, on glucose testing, the state of glucose testing. It was about a year ago. Not a lot has changed, uh, unfortunately. I had hoped that the Apple Watch 8, which is coming out this autumn, would have a, a non-invasive glucose testing, but now it's sounding like it won't. I was hoping that Levels software, the Levels health program that I use, that, that they would have moved on to a better sensor than the Freestyle Libre, perhaps the Dexcom uh, sensor. I think their next generation of sensor is supposed to be pretty good. Um, but regardless, if you, if you don't want to get into that kind of money, having a blood glucose tester and testing products that you're unfamiliar with or testing yourself after you've had a product you're unfamiliar with, something that's new to you, I think is, is hugely important. I think that may be one of the big reasons why a lot of people stall on keto is they're, they think they're doing keto, they're buying keto product, but they're not testing their glucose or their ketones and they're being affected by these products.
And my last little bit for this podcast, because I think I hear Colton approaching the stairs down to the man cave. I think he probably wants to come down here and start playing with his Lego sets. Um, I got recognized again. This is so awesome. I love it when this happens. But I was at a, a garden center in Watertown, Wisconsin, and I hear my name called. I hear Steve. And uh, there was this woman. Her name was Rachel. Hi, Rachel. And she came up and she said, I saw Terry first. And I figured, if Terry's here, you must be here. So as I've said in the past, I to me, it's a thrill every time I have a chance to meet any one of you. But if you ever see Terry or any of my family, hey, Colton. Hey. <laughs> if you ever see me or any of my family, feel free to say hi to them, too. I think they'd get a big kick out of it. Uh, I know Terry would. I mean, that way they can sort of share in the, in the thrill that I get whenever I meet any one of you as well. But that is going to be it for this podcast. As always, thanks for watching or listening.